He got out of bed, dressed, and slipped quietly out the door. Maybe, he thought, the radio would make the cat feel less lonely. It had helped him. Maybe it would do the same for Bones. JT made his way through the night streets. He was a little scared of his neighborhood at night. He didn't like to admit it, but he was. There were two men on the corner drinking something wrapped in a paper bag. They had lit a fire in a trash can and were huddled over it trying to keep warm. JT thought they looked lonely too. When he reached the house, he walked as silently as he could. He didn't want to waken the cat if he was asleep. He looked in and saw Bones staring up at him. His one eye was lit up like a light as though he had a flash battery inside of his head for nighttime use. JT put the radio inside the stove next to the cat's ear, adjusting the volume and station to what he thought would be to Bones' liking. The batteries were fading out, so he turned the radio vertically and then horizontally for best reception. He checked the wounds and petted the cat gently. JT felt a warm vibration that made him smile. He had never felt a cat purr before. Bones blinked up at JT sleepily. JT pulled the hood up closer around the cat's shoulders and turned to leave. He looked back several times before disappearing into the night. If it had not been so dark, he would have seen Bones watching out the window of his beautiful home staring after his newfound friend for as long as his one eye could focus clearly. The next morning, JT was halfway out the door when his mother called to him. Wait, JT, you got to go to the store before school. She handed him a grocery list. Here, charge it, she said. If he says anything about the bill, tell him I'll get it straight with him as soon as I get paid. Now run on. JT looked up at Mr. Rosen, then down at his list. A pound of lard, a quart of buttermilk, and a half dozen eggs, please, he said. As Mr. Rosen gathered the items, JT looked carefully through the cluttered rows of canned goods. His eyes seemed to be magnetically drawn to the tuna fish section. Bones would like tuna fish, he thought. As Mr. Rosen handed him the bag of groceries, JT looked up at him, then over at Mrs. Rosen, then down at the list. He was staring so hard at the list that he thought his eyes might burn a hole through the paper. Pretending to read from the list, he cleared his throat and said, oh yes, four cans of tuna fish too. As Mr. Rosen put the tuna into the bag, JT added, charge it, please. My mama says she'll give you what she owes you as soon as she gets paid. As he turned to leave, Mrs. Rosen called after him. Tell your mother it's been two months now and not a penny. JT looked back at her, worried that she might take the tuna fish away. As he went out the door, he heard Mr. Rosen say to his wife, Sarah, don't not to the boy. Why are you worried? We're so starved we can't give a little credit. Mrs. Rosen answered back, giving people a break is one thing, Abe. Letting people take advantage of you, that's another. Face it, Abe. You got a heart like a sponge cake. You treat this store like it was a care package. You're the original Mr. American Express card himself. JT hurried back home with the groceries. On his way, he had taken the cans of tuna out of the bag and stuffed them into his pockets. His mother and Mama Melcy were in the kitchen having coffee. He walked past them and put the bag on the kitchen counter. Then making sure no one saw him, he took the can opener from the kitchen drawer. Mama Melcy grabbed him as he was leaving and jokingly spanked him on his behind. You better scat on out of here, Mr. Feisty Pants, and get yourself to school, she said with a laugh. 
Mama Melcy always made him feel good. He dodged her playfully and skittered out the door. A few minutes later, JT was where he most wanted to be, beside the cat. He checked the wounds first. They seemed better, but bones drew away in pain when JT went near the gash in his throat. JT opened a can of tuna and offered him small pieces with his fingers. In the section of the story that I read today, JT purchased four cans of tuna fish that was not on his mother's list when he went shopping. I want you to think of an inference. That means to come up with a conclusion based on the facts and the evidence that you know from reading thus far. Coming up with your own inference, that means your own conclusion, what do you think is going to happen when JT's mom gets the bill and there's extra money because of the four cans of tuna fish that were purchased? Hope you stay tuned to read the next session with us.